So I want to go over what the answers are for this plagiarism activity to make sure you see which examples would be considered plagiarism and why. And also, uh, some of the examples aren't technically plagiarism, but they could definitely be done better. Before we start, let me just say this. to uh, th There's probably going to be some students who really kind of get themselves worked up uh, obsessing over accidental, accidental plagiarism, like what if they accidentally plagiarize something. I'll just be very honest with you. I don't see accidental plagiarism. Uh, it, it just it doesn't happen because it's so easy to avoid plagiarism. Uh, basically, the only two things you have to do to avoid plagiarism is if you're using someone else's words, you've got to put quotation marks around the words that don't belong to you and give me a citation of where it's from. If you're using someone else's idea that you have found, someone else's idea, you're looking at someone else's idea and you decide you want to bring that into your own idea. Um, you've got to give credit for that through, uh, if you put it in your own words, you don't have to use quotation marks because you're rephrasing it in your words, but uh, you do have to give the parenthetical citation at the end. So let's go through our examples here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Most of these are pretty uh, basic forms of plagiarism. Uh, the reason why most teachers would receive plagiarism in assignments is not because it's done by accident, but just in all honesty, it's it's done out of either poor time management. Uh, students sometimes wait way too long to either finish an assignment or even start it. Um, also, it could just be out of laziness. So if you're in a situation where you are a student who is working um, using proper time management and, and you are not uh, doing your assignment lazily, uh, you really shouldn't have to worry about accidentally plagiarizing. But this activity will make sure that uh, there's no concern you have about did you accidentally plagiarize something. So example number one uh, is an, uh, an example of obvious plagiarism. This is where the author has just copy and pasted a section from our material which we have up here. Um, the material here uh, if the author, uh, if the student finds this passage online or something, and the student just says, well, I tell you what, this sounds good, I'm going to highlight um, this mount and copy, and then on my blank document I'll just paste it right in there. That's obvious plagiarism. Uh, the first example does not have a parenthetical citation. It does not have uh, quotation marks around the quota material either. So number one is definitely plagiarism. Number two, notice that the student here has added the parenthetical citation, which is good. Uh, parenthetical citation does help avoid plagiarism, but keep in mind that uh, this, passage this passage still contains uh, words that do not belong to the student. Uh, this is actually quoted material. So what happens here is if I see this parenthetical citation, and there are no quotation marks around the material uh, that I as a reader assume that I'm dealing with a paraphrase where the author has taken this material and rephrased it in his or her own voice. That's not what we have here. We have a direct quote that doesn't have, uh, doesn't have quotation marks around it. So even though the student here did give the parenthetical citation, uh, it's still considered plagiarism because we don't have quotation marks around the quoted material. So number two is a problem. Number three, we have the parenthetical citation. So again, we have no quotation marks around it. As a reader, I'm assuming that this is going to be a paraphrase. Since we have the parenthetical citation and no quotation marks, I'm assuming that the author has found an idea that the author enjoys and rephrased it in his or her own words. Um, if you look, though, at the above material this is coming from, you'll find that there actually is quite a bit of quoted material in here, direct quote and it's missing the uh, quotation marks. So even though not every bit of it is part of the direct quote, uh, a majority of it is uh, verbatim from the material that it's taken from. So number three would be considered plagiarism. Number four, notice here that um, the student is trying very hard to give credit uh, for where they found the information. Notice here we have the parenthetical citation, which is always good. Also, we have quotation marks around the material. Uh, as long as it's a quote, that's also good. 
Number four is not considered plagiarism because it's obvious to everyone that the student is trying very hard to give credit to where this information comes from. Here's the problem though, it's not correct uh, because the student has put quotation marks around material that actually is not a part of the original quote. So remember that you only have to put quotation marks around the stuff that is being quoted. Um, if you've got some material that's a direct quote and some material that is paraphrased in your own voice, that's fine. We'll see a later example of where uh, that's done effectively, but that's very good to do. In fact, I would argue that uh, you should shoot for if you have a sentence that has a direct quote in it. It should have a little bit of your voice in there and it should also have uh, a little bit of whoever you're quoting. Let's see, are we on number five, I believe? Let me make sure, let me do my count here. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, so let's go to number five. Um, number five is not plagiarism. Number five has quotation marks around the material. Uh, number five also has the parenthetical citation at the end. So I cannot say that number five is plagiarism. However, number five is still not correct. Um, this is using a source in a poor fashion. And this is very important for you to get used to. Whenever you use a direct quote from an outside source, you want to make sure that you incorporate the quote into your own voice. That means that if you have a sentence uh, in a research paper that uses a direct quote, that sentence should actually have at least two voices. Your voice as the writer and the voice of whoever you are uh, directly quoting. The problem with this isn't plagiarism. The problem with number five is that the student has just copy-pasted a quote in there and given it credit, but there's no voice of the student to tell me what to do with this quote. Now there's two things you can do to effectively incorporate a quote. One thing that's very easy is you can tell me in uh, your words, you can tell me the author that this quote is coming from. Uh, for example, the student here could have said, according to a study by Barash, and then quote the Beardsley Max study based on questionnaires and blah, blah, blah. Here, the student is kind of introduced where this information is coming from. The most effective thing, I think the most advanced thing, method that you can use to introduce a quote uh, or to incorporate a quote uh, in your voice is to explain its significance to your argument. Basically, this is a method where either before or after a direct quote, you explain what the quote means for your argument. You put your spin on what this quote, uh, what it says towards your thesis argument. So that could have been done here, and we'll see a couple of examples of how that is done. In fact, number six is not plagiarism because we have here a parenthetical citation and we do not have quotation marks, so again, we assume this is going to be a paraphrase. And if you look at the above material, you find out that this actually is effectively paraphrased. The student has changed the word choice uh, and the sentence structure enough in this to where it no longer imitates the original word choice and sentence structure. So it does not need quotation marks because it's not a direct quote. Uh, the student here has taken an idea and paraphrased it into his or her own words. Um, and that's fine to do. So number six is, is acceptable. Some people may think, well, wait about, uh, what about the word pessimistic? That was in the above material. I would argue that pessimistic, if you were really that concerned about it, you could put quotation marks around the singular word pessimistic. Um, but I don't really see any, any reason based on one word to um, call that plagiarism. One word similarity is not really going to worry me. The last example is the most advanced example uh, of, of including a direct quote in a research paper. Notice that the last example has two voices. Uh, you've got the writer's voice introducing uh, where the quote is coming from. As a result of their study of hundreds of children, researchers Beardsley and Mack have come to the conclusion that and so this is uh, the writer's voice just kind of saying where this information is coming from. And then it transitions into the direct quote itself. We have quotation marks around the material that should be quoted. And we also have the parenthetical citation at the end. So keep in mind that if you are not trying to plagiarize um, on purpose, you really shouldn't have to worry that much about it. Um, I hope this helps.